after a breakup with a narcissist chances of being cool and cordial with them again are zero to none because their mentality is set on being entitled to you even after the breakup so when it's something they're holding against you away from you like a way to kind of lure you back in to talking to them one of the most used phrases they say is when you're like okay i'll meet you here or i'll meet you there to get this and they'll say stuff like and you're going to be by yourself well why do i have to be by myself or if they holding something that's for you after the breakup something they know you need you know it's like they string you along and you'll get it back when they want you to have it that's a way of them you know just kind of staying in control of you because they know the only reason why you're in touch with them is because they have something that belongs to you but of course they want to put this up you know fake crap out to the public to say that you are running behind them and you won't leave them alone but what the public don't know is that you're not running behind them you're pretty much just kind of you know you took their word for it that they're gonna do the right thing and you know you're gonna meet me here or there so i can get my stuff and so they say stuff like well i have to go meet him i'm gonna go ahead on and meet him and just see what he wants Oh, I'm going to go ahead and go meet her and see what she wants. Something like that. Because they know that if it had gotten around enough, if they got it out to enough of people, that they're going to meet you. It's going to more than likely look like you're running behind them because you don't want to accept the breakup. When the reason why you're meeting them is because they don't want to accept the breakup. So again, narcissists have this very tricky way of just trying to manipulate the public, brainwash people, and just get you to kind of see things in their reality. Because in their mind, they've come up with this false reality that you don't want to let them go. And so, you know, these people are, are real life sociopaths they need people they need people to feel and believe them to make them feel like something to make them feel on top of things that's why one of the most powerful things against a narcissist the most powerful weapon is to expose them but when doing that you have to be careful and know how to go about doing it because it can backfire because a lot of things that actually happen, the narcissist will be quick to use that and throw up against you as a weapon and a way to, you know, just kind of like um, diminish your character, just make you look bad. But anyway, the narcissist, they do that a lot after a breakup. They like to hold on to your belongings and they will keep coming up with excuses as to why they can't meet you right now to give it to you. So when you say things like, well, how about I send this person to come and get it? Or you drop it off at this person's house or that person's house. Or just drop it off in my mailbox or at my mom's house, friend's house, relative's house. They're going to come up with every excuse in the book as to why they can't do that. But the moment you say, when do you want to meet? They're going to tell you, I can meet you this time. And they're, they got to turn it into, you know, they have to make it to where it fits their schedule. When they have all the time in the world to give you your belongings. But that's just the way of them stringing you along. It's all a part of the mind game. It's all a part of control. You have to do things their way at all times. And in the midst of that, they are still getting supply off you as long as you are checking in with them texting them and they don't reply 
they looking at those text messages and they get a kick out of it. It feels good to them just to see you are reaching out to them. They are waiting on you to text them. Even though they've already, you know, decided not to respond. Because they know, chances are, if they respond, you know, you're going to get the last word. And then that's going to leave the ball in their court. And it'll leave them playing this game by themselves. So they need you to keep reaching out to them. It gives them a high. It makes them feel good to know they got this type of control over you. When in reality, it's not even about them controlling you. It's just about the way they are reacting to something, taking it completely out of proportion. When you could just come to a peaceful agreement and go your separate ways. But narcissists don't know how to departure without, you know, just completely going off and doing the absolute most. They, you know, they look at it as a loss. And to feel defeated after a breakup, I mean, you who thinks of a breakup that way? I mean, of course, a narc victim is going to feel a little defeated because it hurts. You feel betrayed. You feel like the whole while, you know, you were dealing with a complete stranger who just drained you of everything and took you for everything you have. And you just gave so much of yourself and got nothing in return. You feel used, betrayed, everything. But once you start to realize what really happened with who you were dealing with, you will start to see it in a different light. And I know it takes time before that really happens because it just takes time. It really takes a toll on you. It, you they really do a number on you. I mean, some people, it's hard for them to to heal from that kind of pain and abuse but narcissists again back to the breakup thing and what they do after a breakup to keep you strung along they keep your stuff they're gonna keep some of your things if they don't keep anything that belongs to you or hold on to something that they were supposed to have been giving you before the breakup or before I'm gonna say before you got out, cause they're not gonna look at it as a breakup. If they speak on what happened to other people, they're gonna look at it as something. They're gonna portray it as uh they left you alone and stuff like that. And then they're gonna they're gonna make it look like they're the victim. You cheated on them. You treated them bad. You know you were just you just. With somebody, they just completely waste their time. They're just going to keep making, try their best to make you look bad. And stuff like that. And they, they love to hold on to text messages and just things. Even if it was something you text them a long time ago about a mutual friend. So now they got that as proof that it's going to make it look like you were talking behind somebody's back. So they holding it up against you as a way to blackmail you and expose you because you got out of a relationship with them. Even though if you spoke about somebody behind their back and it was the truth, it's not like you done anything wrong. But the narcissist wants you to believe that. Because they need you to feel threatened and afraid to move on now and you got to maneuver more carefully you got to be careful when you you know you backing away from them you gotta you know it's like a you know it's like when a mom put the baby down for a nap and she have to move quietly and careful and you know make sure she doesn't make any noise or trip over any toys to wake the baby and then back away slowly because if you don't do that <laughs> you know and the narcissist is going to completely just go off 
the the backlash is, is going to be bad. It's going to be something you wasn't even expecting. Something you don't even want to deal with. They make a lot of noise. And they get very loud. And they get angry and aggressive and violent and abusive. And they say things that they were holding in. Something that they were waiting for the perfect moment to throw back in your face. I've been there. And they like to, out of the blue, say things like, Well, did you tell her you said? No, I didn't tell her. But I can because it was the truth. So you're really not doing anything, you know, to expose me. Yes, I said it. And I meant it. Maybe I should have said it to her first, but I didn't know that I couldn't confide in you. I didn't know that you were just this fraud of a person I've been dealing with. I didn't know you were going to try to throw this back up, but it's okay. You have to let the narcissist know you can try all you want to to hurt me, you know, moving forward after the relationship. But you will not succeed. Because I'm not going to let you feel like you got me. You can't hurt me. Like um, one of the saying goes, you cannot hurt me. What is it? Or you cannot beat me with the sticks of my past. They like to throw things in your face that they know will get to you. It's going to put you in a deep thought. But once you have dealt with those things and you're healing from it, the narcissist can't hurt you with that. It makes them look bad. It just shows who they are as a person. It just shows the type of heart they have to throw something up in your face that they know will probably hurt you. So you just have to know how to play the mind game right along with them and beat them at it. And don't give them, you know, don't be tit for tat. Don't go back and forth for them. Don't explain yourself to a narcissist. Never explain because you'll be going in circles and circles and just driving yourself insane with an insane person. They're already insane. They don't know that they are, but you know something is not right. You know, so why even wrestle with it? Like they say, you wrestle with pigs, you get dirty. And stuff like that, you know, so just think about it. Whenever you're trying to retrieve, you know, your personal items from a narcissist. They will do everything they can to make you beg for it and keep running behind them. And trust me, they have already smeared your name, created this fake, you know, just created this fake reality that you were abusive to them. You know, you cheated on them. They've already put that out. When you're not hearing from a narcissist, they're always up to something. They're always up to something. You cannot trust them in their silence because their silence is deadly. They're up to something. And then when they just come back out of the blue, you know, just always keep in mind that they cannot they cannot be trusted so just deal with it as um careful as possible you have to be careful dealing with them and keep documents of everything record the conversations and just let them know that you're not okay with meeting them alone you would like to bring somebody you know, 
and you know just think about that so thank y'all for watching leave your comments down below talk to you soon